Hi and welcome back to my channel. Having a diversified portfolio is a key investment strategy and index funds and ETFs can definitely help you to do this. They allow people to invest in many assets by only buying one stock and can be a great long-term investment. I personally wish I'd known about them when I started investing because they can be great for people who don't want to spend time researching individual stocks or possibly want a more hands-off approach or want to invest in a market area as a whole. So in this tutorial, I'm going to firstly explain what are index funds and ETFs, and then I'll show you how you can buy these on eToro. I personally use eToro as my main investment platform, and this is the very first broker I ever started out with, and it's great for beginners. If it's your first time watching my channel, then my name's Ollie, and I've been an IT consultant for the finance industry since 2008, and I've been actively investing in the stock market since 2016. If you enjoyed this video, then I'd really appreciate an early thumbs up, as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm so that my content can reach more people. Also, please subscribe and press the bell icon to be notified of the latest videos as I upload new content every week on personal finance, investing, and how to reach financial freedom. Also, if you're not already signed up to eToro and decide to sign up while watching this video, then I have a, an affiliate link down below this video, which if you sign up using it, then I will get a kickback and it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it really helps support this channel. Please note the information in this video is not intended to be financial advice. And if you want financial advice, you should seek a licensed professional because at the end of the day, I am just a guy on YouTube. So make sure you do your own research as your capital is at risk. Also, past performance is not indicative of any future results. So firstly, what is an index fund? So to explain this, you need to know what a stock market index is. Stock market indices are made to quickly measure the overall stock market performance and are based on a representative sample of stocks. For example, the FTSE 100 is an index of 100 companies with the highest market capitalization listed on the London Stock Exchange. Another example you may have heard of is the S&P 500, which measures the stock performance of 500 large companies listed on US stock exchanges. It's not always the largest companies though. For example, Tesla wasn't added to the S&P 500 straight away, even though it was in the top 500 companies by market cap. The companies that create these indices have characteristics that define whether a company can be added to the index or not. So from this, what is an index fund? An index fund tries its best to technically mirror the performance of the index. So if the S&P 500 index went up 5% today, then you should also see a 5% increase in your index fund. This also means if a company drops out the top 500, this stock will also drop out the index and will be replaced by another one. Because the fund only purchases stocks in the index, the fees are generally low because you don't have to pay for fund managers to make decisions on which assets to buy. Therefore, there are fewer expenses to eat up returns before they are passed on to shareholders. Index funds are passively managed, which means the fund manager follows the index and does not use their own discretion to buy stocks. The investment strategy behind index funds is that it is very hard to try to beat the market consistently by picking individual stocks. And by buying an index fund, you are not looking at timing the market and instead looking at time in the market. They are also great for a more hands-off approach. Now, if I'm being pedantic and using the exact definition of an index fund, then you can't buy these on eToro because index funds are bought directly with the fund manager, such as Vanguard, for example. But before you close out this video thinking it's clickbait, index funds generally have an ETF version of the same product which can be bought on eToro. And these are bought and sold like stocks. So let's go through what is an ETF. So what is an ETF? So an ETF stands for an exchange traded fund, which is a fund that's traded on a stock exchange. ETFs generally follow a theme and they can track an index exactly how an index fund would, but alternatively, they could also be thematic and invest in a certain area of the market like green energy or disruptive technology, for example. ETFs give you more variety than an index fund and could be a basket filled with stocks, commodities, real estate, crypto, and bonds, and a wide variety of other assets you might want to invest in and they don't always have to track an index. And when you buy into one of these ETFs, you are actually buying a basket of these assets with one purchase. 
because they are listed on a stock exchange, you can buy them at any point that the stock exchange is open. ETFs are great for many reasons. Firstly, they allow you to invest in a variety of assets all at once without having to buy each asset individually. You don't need to pick an individual winning company as you get exposure to a group of them. Secondly, it saves you having to research all these assets individually because instead you can expose yourself to lots of different assets in an index or a market sector. This should help lower your investment risk through diversification. Obviously, bear in mind investments can always go down as well as up. Now, luckily eToro offers commission-free trading, so this doesn't apply to eToro, but if you were buying an ETF at many other brokers, they may charge commission on each trade. But because you're only purchasing shares in a single ETF, it's only one transaction charge that you would have to pay rather than paying charges to buy all the assets listed in the ETF. But like I said, this doesn't apply to eToro because they are commission free. A couple of things to bear in mind, actively managed ETFs may have fees. This is where a fund manager decides what is listed in the ETF. These come more with thematic ETFs rather than index tracking ETFs, just because there is little for fund managers to manage on an index tracking ETF. Another thing to bear in mind is thematic ETFs or industry ETFs might actually increase your risk. If for example, you invested in say a travel ETF just before the pandemic kicked off, you'd have probably lost quite a bit of money at the time, considering the travel industry has suffered a lot over the last year. If you want to know more about ETFs, I recommend you check out eToro's page, which goes more in depth than I will on this video. And so the link to that is in the description below. Because ETFs can be purchased on an exchange, you can purchase them anytime the exchange it is listed on is open. So now I'm gonna show you how to invest in ETFs using eToro. So firstly, I'm gonna do this on my virtual account to demonstrate to you, but it's exactly the same in the real portfolio. So eToro has made it really easy to see all the ones they have on offer. So firstly, you just need to go to discover over here, then click ETFs here. And here you can see all of the ones they offer, uh, but if you know specifically what one you want, you can always search for it in the top. Now, there may be some names in here that you recognize, such as iShares or Vanguard, for example, and you may recognize some of the ETFs in here also, such as QQQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ 100, or possibly VTI, which tracks the total US stock market, or even VU, for example, which is an S&P 500 index tracking ETF. And I do another video which shows how most people can potentially become a millionaire just by investing in an S&P 500 index tracking ETF. If you've not seen that video, then I recommend you check that out. Uh, the link is up here and in the description below, but quick word of warning, it takes time and you won't be a millionaire overnight. So go check that video out after this one. So once you've decided which one you want to invest in, I'm gonna pick VU for this demonstration. So if you drill into that ETF there, you can see you end up on the page of the ETF. Now, they've got a bit of a bio here about the ETF, and then you can see things like stats relating to it, and also the previous price movement on the chart here. To open a trade in this, you would press trade. So starting at the top, you want to leave this on buy. If you pressed sell, then you would be opening up a short position, which means you're opening a trade where you're betting on the price going down. To learn more about that, then I recommend you check out my video up here and in the description below. And now I'm gonna put it back to a buy position. And now in this drop down here, you've got two options. One is trade and one is order. So trade, you're basically saying buy this at the market price. And order, you get to specify the price you would be happy for the trade to open at. So say for example, you'd be happy for it if, it, if the price went down to 400, then it would then open that trade. But I'm gonna do a trade for now, and then I'll come back and show you an order afterwards. So the next box to populate is the amount. So I'm gonna say I want $1,000 in VU, and you can populate this with a cash amount, or you can pick the amount of units. It will do the conversion between the two there, if you flick between the two. Now down here, we have a few other boxes. Firstly, if we start in the middle one for leverage, if you're a beginner, I would Definitely stay away from this because leverage increases your exposure in the market. And I do an in-depth video on this, which you can check out up here and in the description below. 
But as a brief overview, it's as if eToro has lent you money. And so the best way to understand leverage is through an example of how it affects your profit or loss potential. So if you trade with no leverage, which is a one times here, then if you invest $1,000 for every 1% move in the market, you can gain or lose $10 which equals 1% of $1,000. In comparison, if you were to invest the same $1,000 and trade using times 10 leverage, I know they don't have it here, but for the sake of this example, the dollar value of your position would be equal to $10,000. So 1% of $10,000 equals $100. So for every 1% move in the market, you can gain or lose $100. So basically, if the market moved 10% against you, your entire position would be wiped out. And on a really bad day or on some hype stocks, 10% is really not unheard of. So not only are you increasing your risk, uh, but you will no longer hold the real asset if you use leverage, which is why it says CFD trade here. Um, and they will also charge you overnight fees for this. So this is why I personally stay away from leverage and I highly recommend others do also. So I'm gonna put this back to one times. Um, and so next we've got stop loss and take profit and these are kind of related again I've done an in-depth video on this which you can check out up here and in the description below but as a brief overview stop loss is an instruction to eToro to automatically close a trade at a specific rate or an amount if the market falls so that you can prevent additional losses this is optional on non-leverage buy trades. So you can press no SL here if you don't want to set one. And you can always change this later once the trade is open, which I'll show you shortly. And similarly, take profit is the inverse of this, where you give an instruction to eToro to close a position when it reaches a certain amount of profit. Again, if you don't want to set this, you can choose no TP and you can always change this later once the trade is open. So now I recommend you just give it a quick once over and I'm happy that we're gonna open $1,000 in VU. And then if we press open trade, you can see it says order filled $1,000 of VU. So now if we go to my portfolio and we can see VU here. So if we drill into that, you can see this is the trade that I just opened up, which is at 3.51 on the 30th of the 11th, 2021. Now, if you wanted to close this position for any reason, for example, it could have made you loads of profit or you could have lost money, then you just press this big red X here. You can also even close part of it if you want, but I'm not gonna do that for this video. If the stock exchange it's listed on is currently closed, then you may have to wait for the exchange to open before it actually closes out. Now, if you want to change the stop loss or take profit, then you just need to press this cog here. And so you could come in here and then set that. Again, with the take profit, you could do the same thing here. And then you just update the trade. And you can obviously buy more of an asset once you already own it, like I have here. There's like three trades I've opened up here. And obviously when you invest in ETFs, you can mix and match and invest in as many or as little as you want. So now if we go back to VU and we open an order type trade, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to say, if this goes down to 400, then I want to open a trade with $1,000. So currently the price is at 422.45 and we're saying when it reaches 400, please open the trade. Now, there's nothing to say that this price will ever go down to 400. So setting an order doesn't mean that your trade will definitely open. That price would add, have to reach that for that trade to open. So for the sake of this example, I'm just gonna leave everything else as it is, and I'm gonna go set order. So now you see it says order received by VU at 400. So now if we go to the portfolio and scroll down to the bottom, you can see there's a pending order here for $1,000. And if we view that, you can see our VU position here. And if you wanted to cancel this order, you could always just press the red X here. Now, trades may also go into this pending bucket here if the market is currently closed and you try to open one that's on a closed stock exchange. It's worth bearing in mind where the ETF is located in the world as different stock markets around the world will open and close at different times depending on where you are and stock exchanges are also closed on bank holidays and weekends. 
you can see all this info on this page here which shows the opening times of different exchanges around the world like the New York Stock Exchange for example which would open at 2.30 and close at 8 p.m. and if you scroll down further it's got bank holidays and things like that in here also. So I'll put the link to this in the description below so you can check it out after this video. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you got any benefit from this video, I'd really appreciate you hitting the like button as it really helps support the channel. If you've got any questions, then please let us know in the comments below. Let us know which index funds and ETFs you invest in or are looking to invest in. And if you have already invested, let us know which have been your best performing ones. I'd love to know and I read all your comments. Also, for those of you interested in signing up to eToro and haven't already, then as mentioned earlier, there's an affiliate link down below where if you do sign up using it, then I will get a kickback. And it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it really helps support this channel. So why not give eToro a go before depositing any real money as they will give you a demo account with $100,000 of virtual money to learn how it works. The same principles that I showed here for opening a trade also apply for buying individual stocks, crypto, effects, commodities or any other tradable asset eToro offers. So it's worth taking a look at what eToro has to offer. Also, if you want to learn more about how eToro works, then I have a playlist on my channel with loads of educational content. So I recommend you check that out. And also, if you want to watch more videos about personal finance and investing, I have loads of videos on my channel. So I recommend you subscribe and press the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any future updates. It's been Ollie from Get Geek Finance. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.